Hi guys, welcome back to the garage and another instalment on our Bantam build. Now if you watched the last uh, video you'll see that I've been held up by a lack of parts to attach the forks to the frame. The steering head bearings are not available. So I decided to start looking at other parts to see what I can salvage and what needs to be done. Uh, and I found another couple of issues that are going to slow me up. So let's have a look, we'll just work our way through it, see what can and cannot be done, and at the end of the video I'll set out some sort of intended uh, time scale for all of this, because as we speak, the sun's out. First time this year really that you can feel some warmth. Uh, there are buds in the trees, and I've got other things to do. The weather's getting better, I intend reintroducing you to my transit camper and we're going to be off again for a couple of months uh, current situation worldwide permitting um, so anyway on with the bantam and i'll do a channel update quite soon let's have a look right first of all the good stuff the headlamp bowl now i didn't record this because i didn't think it was going to work so here's a picture of what it looked like before I started. And here it is cleaned up, which uh, is a testament to uh, 19, late 1960s British chrome. I mean, it's far from perfect, but uh, considering this is not a restoration, it's a budget build, perfectly usable, as is the headlamp rim. So, that helped me decide, along with a friend's input, as to what to do with this bike. Now I was going to uh, turn it into a sort of semi-trail bike, uh, which, you know, I'm not sure a chrome headlight would have suited. But then my friend said, given most of it is sport, I should build it up as a sport, and then replace the bits as and when I can either afford them or find them. So to that end, we're going to have to start saving bits. And first up, the handlebars. Now given the success, relative success for the headlamp bowl, I'm going to try and clean the bars up. But while we're here, the levers are no good. That's Mazak of some sort, and I think that will probably sand down and I can paint it silver. The twist grip appears okay, the rubber's obviously knackered. And then the choke mechanism is missing its uh, little lever, so I'm going to have to find one of them. And then at the other end, again, the lever's beyond help, but I'm hoping that mount will clean up and be savable. So I think we'll strip all this off, and I'll try cleaning the bars and just see what we got. This one was a bit of a pain, but luckily my nut splitter was able to get at it. Because that's... I'm going to have to hammer that out, it's completely solid. Right. It's cleaned up rather well, a bit like the headlamp bowl. I mean, it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. But, uh, good enough. The only really bad bits have been underneath the grips. But otherwise, a bit more polishing and that'll do fine. Now the, uh, the Mazak bits are typical Mazak really, they've got pitting on them. But again, I won't be replacing them. And then the lever holders are two different sorts. This one which is Mazak, which is pitted. And the bottom has lost virtually all its finish, but that could be painted because that sits underneath the bar. And then the other one is made from a much heavier, stronger material, which is actually in very good condition, as is the clamp that goes with it. Now, I can't see any markings. There's something there, but I don't know what that is. But anyway, they're going to go back on. That will be painted silver. But they are going to go back on. They are usable. They need new levers, which are readily available. 
Now the other thing that should have been on the handlebars, which I forgot, is there should have been a switch unit here. So I'm missing that as well. So I need a choke lever, choke mechanism, and a switch when it comes to rewire it. But that's the least of my problems, as we're about to find out. So let me just move you on again. The wheels. Now they're not sport wheels, they're standard Bantam. And they're not savable. The rims have obviously been rusty and then painted silver. And the spokes are also in pretty catastrophic condition. The spindle's still on them, as are the chain adjusters. Well, on this side anyway. So we need to uh, get this all apart, get the sprocket off, get the tyre off, and then we'll discuss what we're going to do. Must measure this. I'm not sure what size it is. I might have the right size spanner somewhere, but I could see it immediately. Right. So what we've got in here, very greasy speedo drive, which is still turning. Use a good clean washer, a spacer, it's really congealed grease. So let's try going in from this side. Chain adjuster again, that's good. Apologies for the use of the. Uh, oh. For this, I will look for the right size spanner, I'm sure I've got it. Right, probably as best our shoes, so I will clean that down before I go any further. The sprocket's held on by bolts. The drum surface hasn't got a heavy lip, so that rust will clean off. Let me just get some brake cleaner. Just to kill off any unwanted dust. Yeah, that drum's okay. No heavy wear lip on that at all. Right, so. There's a washer in there. So, I should look to the workshop manual, shouldn't I? It's clearly a bearing retaining ring. So, with that out of the way, I should be able to knock the bearing through. So, let's see what I can find to get that off. I'm going to have to drift it off. washer so it should come out that way with any luck don't see why not let's just put a nut back on there it's flush go Got a spindle, which looks okay. 
our wheel bearing and I'm assuming that washer must have been on there right so then our other bearing we need a drift for don't we let's see what I can find Required. This one, I won't show you this, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to take off our spacer. I'm going to support that in the vise, hit the, hit the shaft and that will release that bearing, but you don't need to see that. There we go. Right, sprocket off and uh, old tire off. Don't imagine there's any air in it. Oh, that's wrong. It's, oh, it's fossilised. I've got trouble getting that off. Anyway, sprocket off next. Like these are. That's strange. I thought that was the right size. Mm. Yeah, right, okay. I don't have a, an imperial socket that size. See what got metric. Not sure what size they are. Let's have a look. Between an eight and a nine. It's awkward. Yeah, awkward. Uh, there we go. I've got a ring spanner. Lovely. Right, I'll bring you back when these are done. Right, the uh, bolts are out, but the sprocket's completely stuck. So we're going to be a bit brutal. There we go, good. Patched. So I need one of them as well. I need to get this tire off. I'm going to have to cut it off. I think it's absolutely solid. I'll try a tire on it now, but I'm really not hopeful. Yeah, oh, it's all rusty. Right, I shall cut it off and bring you back. Right, the tyre's off. Bit of a struggle to be perfectly honest, but it's off. I did have to cut it. So now, we come to the crux of the matter, really. The wheels need rebuilding. They need rims, they need spokes. That needs cleaning and painting. Now, I have rebuilt a motorcycle wheel before once I didn't enjoy it to be perfectly honest so I thought this time I'll let someone else take the strain so I asked around and the only person that I can think of locally has got a long lead in time they're very busy 
uh, which could be several weeks again. So we've got a several week wait for the steering head bearings. We've got a several wait, several week wait for the wheels. And in fact, probably longer because it'd have to go to them, be measured, cut, and then I have to take this away, recondition it, take it back to them, get it built up again. So the other thing I've got to bear in mind is cost, or always cost, because I can't afford to spend a lot of money on this bike, it's, just, it's never going to be worth it. Now, I can have it rebuilt for £265, £270, sorry, which is perfectly reasonable. I mean, I, I think that's pretty average, to be honest, so not an expensive price. I can get the bits, the rim and the spokes for £165. So it's a £105 difference. So the question is, is it worth the aggravation and irritation to me to have a crack at it again um, for £105? Call it 100 quid. Well, in fact, no, call it more because it's, uh, I'd have to drop it off, pick it back up again, and it's a reasonable distance. So it'd actually be more than £105. Uh, I haven't decided, is a simple answer. So, on the basis that I may do it, and I may be mad thinking about it, I need to find the offset before I do anything else. Because if I've got to rebuild it, I've got to know where the rim sits in relation to the uh, hub. Now the centre of the hub sits proud of the brake drum, it would, it would be nice if I could turn it over on the brake drum, but I can't because that sits high. So I might as well measure it as it is now. Now fortunately this is a piece of granite so it should be, should be reasonably flat. So if I take a measurement from the granite to the bottom of the rim, assuming the new rim is the same size, no reason to suspect it won't be, but assuming it is, as long as I've got that same measurement at the end of my wheel building endeavours, it should be right. So let's measure it and have a look. Get the old specs on. Oh dear, it's not really... The problem with doing things when there's a camera pointing at you, is there are also lights next to the camera, and therefore if I stand on this side so you can see what's going on, in everything becomes in shadow. So it's actually harder to work on, but then again, mind. Call it 25 milli for the sake of argument. Just try it around your side. Yeah, 25 milli plus the lead in on the ruler. So I shall write that down, and then I will decide what I'm going to do. Now the front wheel is essentially the same as the rear, except it's in even worse condition. So the disassembly is the same as the rear, so I won't bother showing you that really. Well, I might take the brake shoes out and show you see what they're like. There's no, uh, no big wear lip on that drum either, so that's okay. The retainer has been removed by a punch before by looks of it, like I just did. But the removal process for the bearings is just the same. The spokes are lighter gauge. Now if I remember rightly, the replacement ones all come with the heavier gauge. Which could be a problem because those holes might be... Uh, might be too small. Ah, I'll have to investigate that and then uh, I shall measure the offset of this wheel as well. Bearings will come out exactly the same way. Right, well that's it for this one I think. I will pull this apart, next time you come back it will all be in pieces. Uh, oh no, there's one last thing we might as well look at while we're here before we go. And that is the seat which is a, the right shape for a sport. The cover's torn and the fit of it is appalling. 
and it feels like all the uh, padding's gone and crusty. It's obviously been recovered because the underside is quite bad. Although it, is, it does appear to be a, a proper Bantam Sport seat base. We shall see, let's take it apart. So, these chrome fittings appear to be held in with nuts and bolts, unusually. All right, let me find a spanner. Right, they're all rusted. So, I think if you tear the old seat cover off, I might be able to get my nut splitter on them and save them. Save the studs, anyway. A sharp knife. This isn't very easy. Crusty and rotten, but I suspect with a, a glued overlay, which I've done before on a previous bike, it'll hold it together and that might live again. We shall see. Because I really don't think I'm going to be able to get a sport. Let's get rid of this. I well, don't think we're going to have to get a sport phone set. Right, at least we can see the nuts and bolts now. No, I suspect these are too shallow. One off. Right, I'll bring you back when I've tried the others. Right, they're off. Unfortunately, I had to cut them off. And I don't think they're going to slide. Oh, that one is. I'll try and get them out of the trim strip. Yeah, that one's moving. That one's solid. Right, I shall do my best to get them out of there because they're probably usable. Now, Seat base, unfortunately, is mm -hmm. probably saver, but not great. The front mount's okay, the rear mount, the feet are splayed. I'm not sure why, but again, a bit of heat and tapping will sort that out. It has the usual seat base problems of splitting around the mounts, so that needs welding. Are those Although it looks very rusty, most of it's sound. The back bit isn't. I don't know if you can see that. And the same there and along there. So that is welding. And I suspect it's actually bent out of shape. Because I would imagine Yeah, they've been closer together. That split there should be together and it isn't. So it needs pressing down. A friend of mine has a press. It's obviously been bent out of shape for a long time. So I think if I put, yes, bulge there. It's a bulge there, but it's been bent. 
either a block of wood. In fact, we'll try that. We might as well start brutal and uh, try and move on from there. Yeah, that crack is nearly back to where it should be now. It probably wasn't far off that before it cracked. This one's still slightly out, but not a lot. So let's just try that. Yep, so that is now touching, and that is as near as down it touching. One more belt. Yeah, because that's folded over. That's close. So that's more the original profile, which is a lot shallower than it was. I'm not sure how I'm going to de-rust this. I might get a large plastic container and submerge it in uh, citric acid. Because with the cracks welded, that base is reusable. The foam with an overlay is probably reusable, so I've just got to find a cover. Anyway, that's enough for this one. So thanks for watching. Call back again. The Bandon project will be on and off, I think, because, as I said at the beginning of the video, I have more pressing matters coming up. And all of the issues that we've got, the wheels, this, the uh, steering head, none of them is going to be a, a quick fix. You're all going to take time and money. I've got one, but not the other. There's always a lottery, I suppose. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please call back. There's loads of petrol head nonsense on this channel. There's going to be more stuff, different stuff, coming up very, very soon. So please subscribe, call back. See you again soon, I hope.